Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. This video is about close-up photography with Nikon's Nikkor 85mm 1.8 Z-mount lens using Velo autofocus extension tubes. Now, if you're into close-up photography or macro photography, you like to photograph insects or flowers or things around the house or out in nature, a dedicated macro lens is usually your best bet. Nikon makes a great 105 millimeter macro that focuses from infinity down to one to one. It sells for about $1,050. Autofocus, it also has vibration reduction built in. But if you're on a limited budget and you already have an 85 millimeter lens, which by the way is an excellent portrait lens, the 85 millimeter 1.8 works out great for portraits, wide open, it's extremely sharp, and gives you a really nice background blur. So let's say you have that 85 and you want to do some close-up photography. Yes, you could go out and buy that 105, but why not save yourself a lot of money and just pick up a set of extension tubes. Now these Velo tubes, uh, there's two in the set, a 12 millimeter and a 20 millimeter tube, they sell for around $80. So what will this enable you to do? Well, first of all, once you put an extension tube on, you can no longer focus to infinity. In fact, your focusing range is very limited. Using just the 12 millimeter tube, it will allow you to focus down to about 18 inches from the focal plane. At the closest, at the furthest, with this 12 millimeter tube, you'll be able to focus to 32 inches. So you have a range of 18 to 32 inches using a single tube. Okay, so if you're doing some close-ups and now you want to go run and do a portrait, you're going to have to take this extension tube off. With the dedicated macro lens, no need to do that because the lens will focus from infinity down to one-to-one -to, -one to give you a life-size image. So what will you cover using the 12 millimeter tube? at the minimum focus distance, a subject that is four and five eighth inches wide. So it gets you pretty close. Without the extension tube at the minimum focus distance, with the 85 1.8, you could focus as close as approximately 30 inches and that will cover something 10 inches wide. If you just use the 20 millimeter tube, you will be able at its closest focus distance, you will be able to cover something about three and a half inches wide. And if you combine the tubes, you could focus down to close to one to one, about a little, a little less than half life size, you could cover something two and three quarter inches wide. So they're very versatile, get you very close. It's just that if you're going with different distances, different size subjects, you may have to add a tube, subtract a tube, use the 12 millimeter tube, possibly use the 20 millimeter tube, or a combination. Now, you do lose some light with the extension tubes, but the same thing with a macro lens. The 105 2.8, as you get into the close-up distances, is no longer 2.8, but your meter in the camera will take care of any loss of light. And they work out really well. I previously had the 105 F mount, macro lens. I sold it last year in anticipation of buying the new Z-mount, but I started using these tubes on my 85 and it worked out great. Now you could use extension tubes on a shorter focal length lens, let's say a 50 millimeter, and it works out fine with one issue. When you use extension on the wider lenses, you're getting very close to your subject and there's not much room for maneuvering, for lighting. You may cast a shadow. If you're outdoors photographing insects, you will be right up on top of them and scare them away. So a longer lens, such as the 85 with extension, will give you a nice amount of working room. With both tubes attached to the 85 millimeter, at the closest focus distance, 
Okay, that is, would cover a subject two and three quarter inches wide and fill the frame with it. The distance from the focal plane to the subject is 15 inches. The distance, if you have the shade on, now the shade for the 85 is two inches long. If you have the shade on, you still have seven inches from the front of the shade to the subject with both tubes. So you have a good bit of working room if you want to add some lighting. And if you're photographing an insect, you're not right on top of it as you would be with a wider lens. These tubes do allow you to autofocus when doing this close-up photography. So that's a really nice feature. However, if you did add additional extension and you wanted to go to one-to-one -one or beyond, then you're not going to be able to use autofocus. You're going to need to move the camera and lens assembly back and forth to achieve focus. And the best way to do that to move the assembly back and forth is to use some type of focusing rail. Now, I guess if we were pixel peeping and took a picture with the 105 dedicated macro, which is optimized for close-up photography, and then took one with the 85, it's possible you would see a difference. But I think the images with this lens and the extension tubes and the close-up range are excellent. Now, if you really want to get into macro photography and get really close, get to one-to-one -one or beyond, then you could add additional tubes to this setup. But if you're going to do a lot of that photography, I would highly recommend a dedicated macro lens. When photographing in the close-up range, you got to be very accurate in your focus. There's not much depth of field. I stopped the lens down to 11 or 16 for most of these pictures it's to try to get as much depth of field as possible. Now these shots were done with a $1 piece of poster board, orange poster board that I picked up at a local store. And the camera was tripod mounted. At Most of these were shot at f11 or f16. I then switched to white seamless and shot these red peppers. And you could find some great subjects at your local supermarket or grocery store in the fruit and vegetable section. Just pick out the ones you like. Look for ones that would photograph well. And the good thing with these is once you're done photographing, you could eat them. So uh, always fun to do photos like this. So we then went over to my brother-in-law's house, and I had the 12-millimeter tube with the 18, uh, with the 85 millimeter lens and uh, on my Z6. And these were all done handheld at fairly high ISOs at fairly wide apertures. Uh, most of these were shot at 2.8 to F4. In fact, this one of the globe, the focus was on Arkansas, and this was shot at 2.8. So you could see the sharpness of this combination there was then a tissue sticking out of a box in front of a window. I thought it looked interesting. Very shallow depth of field here. I believe this was also done at 2.8. Now, my brother-in-law is a big train collector. He has an unbelievable setup in his basement of Lionel trains. So I shot some video of this for him. And uh, really impressive. What he, all the time he has put into doing this. And then what I decided to do was brought my tripod with my 85 and the mostly with the 20 millimeter tube. And most of these were shot at F8 of some of his trains. And a lot of detail on these engines. And then I switched to the 12 millimeter tube. Again, these were shot at F8 or F9. Now, previously, I did a video on these extension tubes, so I will put a link in the description below. I also have some other videos on close-up and macro photography, so I will put links to them as well in the description. If you have any questions, please email me or leave your question in the comments below. I answer all questions. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. So thanks for watching.